the Activa may be the king of 110cc scooters, but in the world of 125s, the top dog is the Suzuki Access. It has ruled the sales charts with an unbeatable combination of performance, practicality and features. But TVS is having a go at beating that unbeatable formula with this, the new Jupiter 125. They seem quite evenly matched on paper, but the TVS does seem to have a few tricks up its sleeve. We're riding them back to back to see which one comes out on top. One of the many draws of the Access is an engine that's grunty and strong, yet smooth and economical. On paper, the Jupiter seems to have an engine that can match the Suzuki. It's slightly down on horsepower, but it makes more torque at lower RPM. But it's also carrying a little extra weight. In the city, the Jupiter's extra torque pays off, and it can keep pace with the access quite well, whether starting from a red light or rolling on on the move. Part of this is also down to the Jupiter's CVT tuning, which is biased towards zippy acceleration. But post 60 kph, its acceleration trails off quite significantly, while the access continues to pull ahead. The access also has an advantage when it comes to refinement remaining absolutely smooth and vibe-free at all times. While the Jupiter is quite a refined scooter in its own right, you do feel a mild buzz in the floorboard. Both scooters are equally efficient in the city, with numbers that are neck and neck. But the Jupiter's CVT tuning means that it isn't quite as efficient as the access on the highway. Another attraction of the access is its excellent space and practicality. It has always offered a lot of room for rider, pillion and luggage. But the Jupiter has come along and upped the ante. You get an even roomier seat, an even larger floorboard and most substantially a good deal more underseat storage space. Thanks to the fuel tank having been moved under the floorboard. Another advantage of this is that you can refuel without having to get off. With the access, even though the filler is now external, you have to physically insert the key into the filler cap, which means you do have to get off. One area where the Access does still hold an advantage is when it comes to taller riders. The handlebar is a good deal higher up than on the Jupiter, so it doesn't foul with the knees of even the tallest riders. There's a more clear winner in the ride and handling department. With a 12-inch rear wheel compared to the Access's 10-inch unit and a gas-charged, preload-adjustable monoshock, the Jupiter has a bit of an upper hand in terms of equipment. And this is borne out in the results too. The TVS has the more comfortable ride here and does a great job of flattening out the smaller imperfections on our roads. Even over the larger bumps that can't be flattened out, the scooter never thuds or crashes through them, but rather rounds them off quite nicely and softens the blow to a great extent. The Access rides well enough in its own right, but it doesn't quite have this degree of plushness and absorption. Both the Access and the Jupiter have scooter-typical light handling, but the Access feels rather vague and unnerving when leaned over, while the Jupiter is more communicative and sure-footed. The TVS's brakes feel nicer and work better too. The final front to compare these two on is features. They both check the basics with equipment like a USB charger, a boot light and LED headlight. The Jupiter's trump card is a silent starter and auto stop start system, while the Access fights back with fully digital instrumentation and Bluetooth connectivity, though these features are only offered on certain versions of the Access. And so we come to the final question, which is price. Well, as you can see here, the Jupiter has a simpler variant lineup that starts slightly below the Access's base variant and goes up to 81,300 for its most premium disc brake version. The most expensive non-Bluetooth equipped version of the Access is on par with the most expensive variant of the Jupiter, but the Access's connected versions are more expensive. The Access has been the king of this segment for a very long time, and it continues to be an excellent scooter. It's got one of the smoothest engines in the segment and is still the best choice for taller riders but it seems to have met its match in the Jupiter 125. This newcomer doesn't yet get features like Bluetooth connectivity and fully digital instrumentation, which the Access gets on its top variants, but it's just as quick as the Access in the city, just as fuel efficient as the Access in the city, it rides better and offers more practicality and convenience. It also looks and feels a little more premium and upmarket, and all these factors combined are enough for it to justify its price premium over the non-Bluetooth versions of the Access. It's also a little more affordable than this Bluetooth-equipped disc brake version you see here. So there you have it. 
If you are a very tall rider or are spending a lot of time at relatively higher speeds, the Access might be the pick for you. But if you're not, the Jupiter's practicality and convenience should be enough to sway you.